Okay, I'd like to call the February 25th meeting of the Municipal Airport Authority to order in front of you and you receive the minutes of the February 11th, 2020 meeting. Are there any revisions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, they stand approved as printed. Um, number two, let's up, uh, approve the airport vouchers totaling $79,457.21. Motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Roll call vote. Hogan. Aye. Hang up. Aye. Linda. Aye. Lynn. Aye. Number three, approve the individual vouchers as follows. A through G. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Hogan. Aye. Aye. Lind. Aye. Lind. Aye. Okay, number four, receive communications from Hungry's Restaurant, DBA, Skyline Services. Sean. A communication from Dustin Shenawa from Hungry's. Uh, in their lease agreement with us, they have the option to execute a um, an extension that would start January 1st of 2021, expiring December 31, 2024, and they've decided to uh, exercise that option to renew the lease agreement uh, beyond this uh, calendar year. Is there any questions? Comments? Um, we don't have to vote on this thing. Yes. We do have to. All in favor, or is there a motion? Motion. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, number five, receive communication from ABHN Partnership. Okay, this is um, a hangar that is directly west of the Air Museum between the former VIX hangar and the carousel hangar that the Air Museum owns. Um, uh, Bertie Ness is a party to it, and uh, let's see, who's the other partner, John? Larry Haugen. Oh, Larry mm -hmm. Haugen. And they've asked for an extension. Our fi extensions are five-year extensions. And there are aircraft in, in the hangar. Uh, let's see, South GA. Uh, uh, well, it's down by the Air Museum, so it's this hangar right, right here. The Air Museum is right here. So it's the middle hangar. The former VIX, now is part of the Jet Center. It's ABHN and then the carousel at the uh, Air Museum purchase from there. So it is aircraft. Larry still flies. It's in good shape. Okay. Um, so that's active aircraft right now? Yes. Okay, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Or same sign, sorry. All right. Um, auditors report on compliance of PFC program for um, 2019 by Ide Bailey. Okay, so in your packet is uh, the audit that Ashley Honnell from Ide Bailey uh, completed here um, just a few weeks ago for calendar year 2019. And at the bottom of page one, in our opinion, the airport complied in all material respects with the compliance requirements referred to above that could have a direct or material effect on the PFC program for the year ended December 31, 2019. So they didn't find any discrepancies. And it's been that way since 90, 1997 when they started the PFC program. So it's fully audited, fully publicly available, and it's been provided to the FAA. And that's one audit done. We'll still have our grants audited and then the operations and maintenance fund of the audit for the ideally as part of the city audit that it has been for, for decades. When's that one do? When audit. do they do that one? That, it's ongoing right now. Okay. okay. Yep. I'm sure. Yes. Um, do we know the status of uh, legislatively where they are with the raising of the uh, rate for the uh, payment funds? The PFC going the PFC. The cap going up. As far in DC? Yep. Uh, not yet. I'll have an update on that the first week in March when I attend the legislative conference. But it's uh, there is bipartisan support in the House side. I don't know that there will be on the Senate side, but. Uh, ACI, Airport Council International, and AAA, American Association of Airport Executives, are both lobbying pretty heavily to get the PFC increased, which would significantly help us in our ability to quickly fund the projects that are on our CIP. When, when was the last 
What has it ever increased? Been raised? It was raised once. I think the last time was in 2002. It went from $3 to $4.50, and it's never been indexed for inflation. That's kind of in the argument. So Congressman DeFazio from Oregon, who's the godfather of the PFC program, has been actively engaged with us and our association to uh, convince others within Congress. So Congressman Massey from, I believe, Kentucky is now on board. He's the Republican side of it. And like I say, there is some bipartisan support. but. Airlines for America or A4A is always constantly against that, and they have hundreds of thousands of dollars to lobby against us, but um, they're trying. Yes. But we'll get an update the first week of March at our chapter office. Certainly. Good. Does our legislative, state legislative uh, representatives know what, you, uh, what we desire? Kelly Armstrong. All three are aware of it. Uh, Hoven and Kramer have been. Kramer, when he's on the congressional side, and, and others before. and. It doesn't, doesn't take hold on the Republican side. They, they look at it as a tax increase, which it's not. It's a local mm -hmm. user fee. You give the authority to the five members of your local governing boards the ability to increase fees if necessary. So it's not a tax. It's a user fee. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I would ask our, our two commissioners that are here, I know they go to Washington and, and interact a lot with uh, others that you know, push for, for that increase for If somebody could give us a letter or a document, we actually could step in there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very well. No problem at all. Okay. 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 Any other discussion? Um, a vote to receive the audit auditor's report. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. All right, the 2019 Airport Improvement Fund balance. Uh, would you like to <coughs> review this briefly? This is a, a accumulation of all the monthly reports that you get from uh, the accounting system that we use as, as part of the city accounting system. And all that data is there. So this just accumulates it into the different projects, revenue sources uh, that we have in the improvement fund. Um, the improvement fund is where the two mill levy goes uh, for construction, marketing, and those things that you see here. That's the first page, mm -hmm. the improvement fund. Um, that's the balance as of January 1st, so a little over $2.3 million that's in there. So you see the sources of revenue and then the disbursements from that. I don't know if you have any questions. Pretty straightforward. Like I say, this is all part of the audit that's undergoing right now with, with I I wanted to point out, and I went through and um, because we are an independent entity, we have 102 sources of income. If you look at page three and four, for an operational net income of two of seven million seven hundred and four dollars plus change, and I think it's just important that we point that out that those are sources of income and not taxpayer dollars. I just think, and it's run really well. When you look at um, the surplus, we have an operational surplus of three point, almost three point two million dollars. That, from a business perspective, that is very running a really good tight ship and a good business. Any questions about this? I think it's really enlightening when people take a look and they see all our income sources, because so many times they just see, you know, uh, passenger fees, and there are, you know, rentals everything. Okay, so the parking and the yep. car rental are the two largest sources of, of revenue that are there. And okay. You look on the expense side, um, as I pointed out, I guess, in years past, customs, uh, we don't generate any revenue from that directly as an airport authority, but certainly in partnership with Fargo Jet Center and Jim Sweeney is here. Mm -hmm. uh, the co-marketing that we do around the world certainly benefits from that and, and significantly offsets that cost that we have, a little over 28000 to to operate the customs facility that's up there. But the number of aircraft that they're able to attract through the marketing and the partnerships that Jet Center's created at these uh, conferences that, that we attend certainly offsets that and fuel flowage fees and other percentage of gross revenue uh, requirements we have. So so customs, I, it, while there is some expense there, it's, it's uh, I think, uh, well covered. Um, 
by the business that is, is directed there. You can certainly see snow removal expenses, obviously mm -hmm. fairly significant uh, last year, um, 629000 for snow removal. Um, obviously, we have a lot of uh, uh, expense in mowing, but uh, 336000 of that was new mowers that we purchased, some replacements, some in addition. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, quite a few acres. I don't know how many acres do we have during the mow. It's uh, <laughs> a few thousand. So. Uh, question. Yes. I noticed in the uh, um, standard parking line item, is that net or is that gross and there's no deduction for, they take care of their own snow, right? Everything. We have no expenses That's at all. Okay. There are expenses, there are lot striping, there are electricity, okay. the whole works, yeah. The snow okay. removal, so. <clears throat> yep. I think, um, kind of to piggyback on the customs facility at the Jet Center, if you've never been there, it's really interesting to go and view that because we worked in partnership with the Jet Center and put it there so you have flights coming in at all hours of the night and they're available. So it's just, it's really, if you've never been there, it's, it's a great place to just go see actually what happens there. So, so like I say, this is uh, through period 13, mm -hmm. if you understand the county. So period 13 is... Uh, Still 2019, but uh, uh, accounts payable, accounts receivable that are conducted in January. Uh, there'll be a period 14 that will be done, some, some late either accounts payable or accounts receivable transactions that will be done on the uh, HTE system. And uh, so this may change slightly, but then I guess once the audit is complete, um, I don't know, that would be April or May. Um, but like I say, this is just a preliminary that you get every year at this time. So if you have any questions. Any other, any comments or questions? We need a vote on that. Did Just receive it. Okay. Yep. Um, and receive a preliminary. We did that too. Yep, both of them. Both yep. of them. Okay. Is there an update on airport construction and or security? Um, well, let's see. On the flood levy uh, that the city is doing, I'm, I'm answering some questions we got from the FA last night on a Part 163 request to the FA, which certifies that the property that the levy is proposed to be constructed north of the airport. Uh, is not on any property purchased with federal funds. However, about 83 acres of the property, we did get reimbursed for a PFC. It was a little over 351,000 in PFC number seven. Uh, but we're putting together the property information now. When it was acquired, who was it acquired from, and how, how it was acquired, I guess. So I may need Stacy's help on one of the old, old tracks that are up there by the uh, Stockman, Stockman edition, but I think we'll get it all figured out. So that, that's where it sits with the flood levy. I think they're still looking at um, Bidding that out, I don't know, maybe Commissioner Petcorn or Commissioner Strand knows bidding that out sometime this spring, the levy north of the airport. So it'll run from the river all the way across to the lagoons. Um, and I guess we'll know more as when we get more information, but I'll get that FA stuff back to them this week. Um, the FA did complete, and I think we reported at the last meeting, the uh, terminal area study, uh, scope of work that Meade and Hunt proposed. So Meet and Hunt is working on your uh, cost for the contract to do the terminal area study. Is that correct, Jeff? Yeah. And hopefully at our next meeting we'll have that contract before so they can begin that eight, nine, ten month process to look at what we need in terms of terminal expansion here. Uh, as you know, we're looking at expanding to the east, hopefully maybe up to four gates, expanding the restaurant opportunities and, and uh, different passenger amenities there, restrooms and so forth, pet relief room and all those things <laughs> that we have to have. So. So at our next meeting, we should have an update on the terminal area forecast so that can get started and, and kind of know where we sit. Um, let's see. East Terminal, uh, Rick, I think um, we, Vox Telesis is still in there through at least April 1st. Yeah, and uh, he's marketing that space in the East Terminal as being available on or about April 1st. We'll see when Vox Telesis moves out. And as the board approved that if... Uh, it's rented within 90 days of their vacate date. Uh, we will reimburse them $5,000 for the tenant improvements that were done. Mm -hmm. If it's outside of that 90-day period, I don't think it will be. I think we'll get it leased out fairly quickly. Um, uh, we'll, we'll convey that, that to them. Um, on the checkpoint, as we reported, uh, we were denied the request for the third lane. Um, as you're aware, we're getting a new machine. Uh, it is in August now. We do have a date. From the TSE is here. We'll get a new machine at the checkpoint in August, which is a slower machine than what we currently have out there now. 
uh, but we've rallied our air carriers and uh, the security folks at the airlines to write some letters to the TSA and congressional folks. Uh, both, uh, all three of our um, representatives in D.C. are aware of this, and uh, and we'll see. The FSD is in charge of it, his superior is in charge of it, but it breaks down in terms of the metrics that they use. And I don't know, Darren, we got some information from the TSA on what was used, but they used data from February of 2019, which our passenger growth has certainly exceeded that uh, significantly from the data that they used. So we haven't captured, in, in our belief, with some of our data. So, so we have um, letters going from the airlines. What would would you think um, a letter from you know the city would help too? The <coughs> impact it has. I mean, I one of the things that that the city has really come to us and said we've had so many complaints, and they say they go to the city, and so this is going to we're going to have more complaints if we don't get this clarified and as you said Bismarck has less traffic and they have three lanes I mean I don't know I'm just thinking I know we're gonna write we're gonna write a letter for um, commissioners Pepcorn and Strand about the PFC maybe we put a you know an information sheet together for them and if they choose to write a letter they can so uh, madam chair I think yeah. that'd be her and all of us could endorse her we could even whatever you want to do okay. but I think that I think that's a good idea because okay. whatever we can do to help that's okay Okay. We're just talking about the third lane. We're, oh, we're picking on him. But <laughs> <laughs> he, along with his boss, they fully supported it. We just can't get it through DC, and that's the frustrating part. And the whole goal is that when the new machine shows up, the machine that they're going to send somewhere stays here. We have three lanes. It's a pretty simple solution, but mm -hmm. for whatever reason, we don't meet the criteria. And we put through 500 some people in those morning rushes, and you take a, a two machines currently that are about 150 passengers per hour capacity and you reduce that down to 90 during the training period maybe it goes up to 125 I mean our mornings are there's already a number of people that miss their flights now some of that is self-inflicted because a lot of people push the envelope here in Fargo mm -hmm. and think well it's Fargo I can get here later mm -hmm. if you have TSA pre-check you normally don't have that problem uh, but it is frustrating we work with the airlines and our social media and everything else and put things out to get here early get here early and uh, we still have people that push the envelope. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, this, yes. this is only going to get worse as construction hits and we try <coughs> to build more gates. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, we, we've just got to we've plan get ahead on better for this construction yeah. that's coming. Additional gates, uh, and I don't know what more we can do except you know. And couldn't make, we? Make we mentioned at the well. last meeting too to send um, just an informational letter to uh, Kramer, Hoven. You know, I think just to make them aware, and Kelly Armstrong. Okay. But if we could be ahead of this, that's ultimately what we want to do. We don't want to be behind this and have the complaints that we know will possibly happen. Once one of the senators misses a flight, then <laughs> it will be. That's right. Anything else? Um, transmitted the cargo information out to the FA, uh, where, where we sit on the cargo project now. I'm going out there on Thursday of this week to so we'll do a plan review and uh, get through that and then we'll advertise on the 6th of April and we'll on the 30th of April. So and then the grant applications are due to the, we'll submit the grant application immediately following, but they're, they're due to the ADO office by the 18th of April, so we'll have a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. So, so that's fine. And then I'll also add the, the SRE building. We just received comments back from uh, the ADO office on Friday of last week. Uh, they had to do their, their plan review. And um, Terry's not here today, but he had sent out an email that everyone uh, uh, wants to get those taken care of by uh, the 10th of March. They're, they're really insignificant, so they won't be. I don't know if he's heard about the date on that. Thank you. Parking's at a premium, and uh, we'll be at a premium all month and probably through the first week. So we have been utilizing the overflow lots over by the tower. Uh, there's a grass area there, and um, SP Plus is working on a program to do prepays. So as people go through the lot and we direct them to overflow, they can prepay. Uh, but it seems to be working out fairly well right now. But um, the overflow is handling it. I don't think it's a significant amount of lost revenue when you look at three to $4,000 per paved parking spot. Mm -hmm. 
you know, maybe we'll look at doing a few this summer, but... Um, now, if I remember right, on. which parking lot fills up first? Uh, the economy the lot, economy ten, lot? Ten, tends to. That's west mm -hmm. of here, the $6 lot, and then the $8 long-term lot. And you can see it, it's pretty big. I think there were 77 open spaces yesterday, and okay. then we go to zero, and then... Then you open... Flights come in, and then a bunch open up, so it, it's... But Jay is out there. Jay is managing it pretty well. And okay. Yes. Usually Thursday, Fridays is when we're when it's early. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, March is going to be a. What What are we going to do in the summer? We're, we're redoing the the uh, car rental lot. Correct. Correct. So what? Where are those cars going to go? When we're redoing that? How? Further west? We're going to go on the long term lot. Yeah, they're going to go right, yeah. We had met with the rental car agencies uh, here a couple of weeks ago and uh, had come up with a plan to designate an area in the long term lot for okay. the uh, rental cars. So yeah, at our next meeting, we'll, now that the plan's been revised based on the input from the, the car rental agencies, mm -hmm. we changed some of those plans, but um, we'll present that, the preliminary plan, at our next board meeting so you can see what the plan is. So. Good. It'll, it'll work out fairly well. And, and if we decide to add more surface parking uh, for the rush next year or something, that's mm -hmm. fine. But by the time you find out when you're going to have all these seats, I mean, Frontier announced late, then American announced daily, like a few days later. It was already in October. Yeah. Well, you can't do any paving <laughs> that time of the year. So okay. maybe we'll do a few spots this summer. We'll see. Any um, other comments, questions? Yes. Um, I've got one other. I want to single out Dan, who uh, a week ago was hanging new new paintings, and uh, our, in our partnership with the uh, with the Arts, Arts Council, Department. yeah, uh, we got some good press. Yes, uh, he was down there uh, hanging those uh, paintings mm -hmm. and didn't fall out of the out of the uh, elevator, and uh, uh, that's great. It was it was very good. Uh, it's fun to. See. Fun to see that, and it's fun to see what we got in the final form. Yes, and some uh, TV coverage as well. Oh, so it's a great partnership. If you haven't been down there, go to the baggage claim and mm -hmm. take a look. So she did. Marcella did a really, really nice job with with that. And every four months, three to four months, we try and change that exhibit out. So we leave that up to the arts partnership. They kind of tell us who went in there and mm -hmm. uh, give them the space. And Dan's been really good to. That's great. Thank work you. with all that art. Uh, it's worked out really well. The only other thing is last uh, Thursday, Mark Sixel and I, Mark is our air service consultant. We met at uh, Delta headquarters with network planning. And they're working on the winter 2021 and uh, uh, into 2022 schedule. Um, and really, you don't see a lot of changes in what Delta will do to serve, serve the community. Uh, they have constraints in Seattle, so they're not interested in that service right now because they're hard standing aircraft out on the ramp. They don't have enough gates. Uh, Salt Lake City is in reconstruction right now, so to put anything to Salt Lake City just isn't in their immediate plans. So the problem is, is we're too close to Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So um, everything that our top 30 markets are served well through Minneapolis. So adding additional Atlanta service over and above what they do on a seasonal basis really doesn't make a lot of sense at this point in their mind, although we disagree. Uh, we'd love to have Salt Lake service back, but um, we'll see. We'll just keep working with them. We meet with Alaska Airlines uh, along with Microsoft on uh, March 16th, I believe, so okay. we'll have an update on that as Great. it goes on. That's all I got. Okay. Um, also, we I brought this up to have a high flyer award, and Darren and Joan and I have been working on that. So hopefully, we'll come up with a. Her we've got I just put together some nomination criteria and hopefully we'll be recognizing some of the exceptional employees here so mayor dardis has anything um, mayor dardis do you have anything you know the west fargo businesses if you ever hear of anything out there from bobcat or any of your businesses about air service ringing by all means let us know and they're really good at reaching out to us or to the airlines directly but uh, certainly do that appreciate you being here yeah so, thank you for being here any other? Yes. Madam Chair, when yes. we're talking these letters, I, mm -hmm. I like I, the idea of us every chance we can joining up with your yep. efforts from the city's perspective mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. What I'd suggest we maybe do, there's two letters that could come here. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we work with Joan mm -hmm. and, and, and Kimber, and I would suggest we get the mayor's signature. Mm -hmm. But if we can, we can help yep. facilitate that. And if you get us a template, we'll get that through. And But I like that and we, every chance we can. Another thought is I'd, I'd like to see you, us have a presentation at the right time from at the City Commission again, an update mm -hmm. on the Airport Authority with what you're doing, mm -hmm. what's going on here, uh, all the activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. All good news. Good. 
Um, so the two letters we're talking about are for the PFC and uh, the checkpoints. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. We'll put something together. You bet. Any other business to come before the airport authority? Hearing none. Uh, meeting's adjourned.